Welcome back in time to the 2011-2012 European football season. FC Barcelona are the current champions of Spain and Europe. Pep Guardiola is the world's best coach and Lionel Messi is the world's best player. It's not bad, is it? This is episode four of the story, Barca, European dominance. Did it go all the way? It's one of the great Copa del Rey final goals from the magical, mercurial Lionel Messi. Over the course of the 2011-12 season, a 24-year-old Lionel Messi would propel himself towards a fourth Ballon d'Or title with a record-breaking 73 goals over the campaign, including 50 in La Liga. That, unsurprisingly, was also a record. This was a man on fire who wasn't just accepted as the best player on the planet, but had the rare ability to leave audiences aghast week after week after week. His football at this point was simply unstoppable, pure poetry and the main driver behind Barca's dominance. Even Pep would say so himself. Cesc Fabregas, the famous Barcelona Academy product, would return to his home at the Camp Nou ahead of the 11-12 season. Barca won both Super Cups again to take over Real Madrid's overall trophy tally and make Pep the most storied manager in FC Barcelona history. Then, later that year, they would defeat Santos of Brazil to claim another historic Club World Cup title. Despite such success, things had to hit a blip at some stage for Barca, who would finish second to Real Madrid in the league that year despite scoring a whopping 91 points. Barca also looked good for another European Cup victory, with Messi scoring five goals in a single game against Bayer Leverkusen in the last 16 before they swept past AC Milan in the quarters, but a shocking and painful defeat to Chelsea in the semis left the Camp Nou in agony. They would finish the season with a Copa del Rey victory at least, but Pep Guardiola announced he would be stepping down. For Pep at least, the dynasty was over. In the following two seasons, Barca would come up short in Europe again, losing in the semi-finals to Bayern Munich in 2012-13 and then the quarters to Atletico Madrid in 2013-14. However, they still won the league in the 2012-13 season. Moments of brilliance were common and Messi continued to shine. The reality, however, was there was a momentary lull for a side who had been dominating so much. There had to be, I suppose, with the change of managers. They were heavily criticised with many fans suggesting that their peak had ended and would not come back. But fast forward to the 2014-15 campaign however and Barca would prove all of their doubters wrong by becoming the first club in history to win a second European treble and the only club to ever achieve such a feat at the time. Do you know which other team has achieved that since? Let us know in the comments below. So since that lull, Barca had been reborn. Messi was still unbelievable of course, but now he had some fresh blood in the attack with him, and these forwards were more than world class. They were two of the very best players on the planet and of their generation, Neymar Jr. and Luis Suarez. The Brazilian and the Uruguayan formed a strong friendship and formidable partnership up top with Messi, and the trio would break records and earn the nickname of MSN. They scored 122 goals in all competitions that year and were simply frightening on the field. Within a couple of weeks, at the end of May and start of June 2015, Barca completed their second historic hat-trick of trophies. The La Liga season came to a close on May the 23rd. Barcelona lifted the league title in front of the Camp Nou after racking up 94 points, pipping rivals Real Madrid to the post with Los Blancos finishing just behind on 92. Then, a week later, on May the 30th, Lionel Messi opened the scoring in the Copa del Rey final with another one of his otherworldly goals. Yep, one of those that will be on the highlights reel forever. I sound like a broken record, but this goal in isolation has to be there with the best ever scored, not least when you consider it was scored in a cup final with the scores level. Messi and Neymar would score the second and third as Barca won 3-1 to be crowned domestic double winners. Juventus then would be the opponents in the European Cup final, 
a fine side with the likes of Andrea Pirlo and Gigi Buffon in their ranks, but Barca were strong favourites, such was their own firepower, and of course, fantastic form going into the game. Barcelona topped a tricky group in the Champions League that season, PSG and Ajax had to settle for second and third. Then, in the last 16, Barca took on Man City and overcame that stern test with victories in both legs. In the quarters, they faced PSG again, but Luis Suarez and Neymar caused chaos for the Parisians in a 5-1 aggregate victory. Barca would take on Bayern Munich in a very tough semi-final tie. Munich had been on fire by winning the trophy two years prior to that in what was their third of four finals. However, Messi's magic prevailed again with another famous goal on another famous night. You know the one. This time he posterized poor Bayern Munich centre-back Boateng by literally turning him inside out. The defender was dazed and confused, left stranded on the turf. Meanwhile, Messi dinked it over Neuer and the Camp Nou erupted. It felt like their year all over again. And on June the 6th, Barca took a lead just four minutes into the final against Juve. Ivan Rakitic finished off a beautiful team move, typical of Barca at the time. One typical, in fact, of their style and grace over the previous decade. Juve would equalize, but Suarez and Neymar returned to the score sheet to see Barca over the line. They wrote their names into the history books with a famous treble. The second, of course, and a fourth Champions League title in just 10 seasons. Remarkable. It's really hard to put into words just how good Barca were, and all the constants like Leo Messi there were with so many changing parts too. From starting players to subs and managers to club directors, even as the door revolved at Barca, their core stayed strong and true to their style. The club identity and style of play didn't really change, and that mixed with world-class talent proved the perfect potion for success. Somehow, Barcelona haven't won another European title since, and Messi, of course, had to leave the club eventually. Everything now has changed. But this side, the side of 2006 to 2015, or the various sides that represented the club in that decade, definitely touched a generation of football fans with their magic. For many, that era at Barca is the best in club football history. It was the best team, manager and player, all together, all at their peak. It's certainly hard to beat, but we'll give it a go in the next series when we have a look at the European dynasty that followed this one, belonging to Barcelona rivals Real Madrid. It's time to hear what you think, so let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and make sure to hit that subscribe button to catch us in the next series of Clubs That Dominated Europe.